Welcome guys. All right, we're going to continue to talk about angle bisectors in this video, and we're going to start putting them in the context of triangles. The goal is that you will use properties based on the concurrency of the angle bisectors of a triangle to do various things. All right, um, so very similar to perpendicular bisectors. It turns out that angle bisectors are also concurrent lines when you draw all of the angle bisectors in a triangle. And I want to illustrate that for you and then talk about some various properties um, associated with the fact that angle bisectors are concurrent lines. Alright, so let's go ahead and bisect the angles of this triangle. Now we are bisecting the angles, not the sides. Alright, so very much unlike the perpendicular bisectors in that sense. So there's the bisector of angle A. Here's the bisector of angle B. And the bisector of angle C. Now, apart from our poor um, drawing of or bisecting angle by eyesight, you can kind of tell that these things are concurrent. They intersect at that point right there, and I'll just call that point P. All right. Now, let's think back to what you learned in the previous video about the angle bisector theorem. You know that any time a ray bisects an angle, that any point, such as point P, that's on the bisector of that angle is equidistant from the two sides that form that angle. So, for instance, point P is on the bisector of angle A, which means it bisects this angle that I just highlighted, and so it is equidistant from those two sides. All right, so that distance and that distance are equal to one another. Then, since P is on the bisector of angle B, that's going to make this, uh, that's going to make point P equidistant from those two sides that I just highlighted in purple. So, that distance from P to segment AB is going to be equal to the distance from P to segment BC. All right, now I know it doesn't look like that, but I don't have ways of bisecting angles precisely on the software that I'm using. Just trust me that whenever you've got the concurrent point of angle bisectors, it is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. All right, so some facts that you need to know regarding the concurrency of the angle bisectors of a triangle. One of those things is what the point of concurrency is called. Remember that where the perpendicular bisectors intersected, it was called the circumcenter. Well, it turns out the point where the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect is called the incenter of the triangle. And, as already stated, the incenter is going to be then equidistant from each of the three sides of the triangle. All right, and then the last thing that's kind of cool that goes along with that that I want to show you right now is that just like the circumcenter, the end center happens to be the center of a special circle related to a triangle. However, unlike the circumcenter, which was equidistant from the vertices and thus was the center of a circle that would circumscribe a triangle, the end center is the center of a circle that you can inscribe within a triangle where it will have one vertex, well, the circle will touch each of the sides exactly one time. I'm going to attempt to draw that for you here. All right, and again, I couldn't get the in center exactly in the right place because I don't have the tools to bisect these angles on this software, but you can see how it's possible to inscribe a triangle. Sorry, in yeah, inscribe a circle within a triangle, and the in center would truly be eh, right around here, really, um, where the... Well, at a point that's equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. All right, in center, equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. Let's use that information here. This is the only problem that we're going to work with in this video. Um, I've given you a picture and I'm telling you that point T is the in center of triangle ABC and I want you to find some certain measurements. Now, this picture looks pretty much like what you saw 
from perpendicular bisectors in the previous section. I want to point out though that these segments in blue, even though they're perpendicular to the sides of the triangle, those are not perpendicular bisectors. This point Z is not the midpoint of segment AB, the point Y is not the midpoint of segment BC, and so forth. Okay, um, They don't look like it, and in this case that means that they're not. Well, so let's see what we can do. Knowing that this point T is the incenter, what that means is that this was created by angle bisectors, correct? And so which segments in this picture could be angle bisectors? Well, how about the segments that join point T to each vertex? Those are angle bisectors. Okay. Now notice that T is not equidistant from points A, B, and C because it's not a circumcenter, it's the incenter. Well, knowing that angle of the T is the incenter and that these are angle bisectors makes it possible for us to find the measure of angle ATC with the information that I've given to you. Now I'm going to highlight angle ATC right there and it's part of this triangle ATC if you will but it's just the angle portion right there that we care about finding but I highlighted the entire triangle because it turns out that we have enough information to find the other two angles in this triangle first. Knowing that this TA has to bisect angle A would lead us to conclude that this angle is 28 degrees just like this one over here, right? Because that's got to be true since angle A was bisected. Similarly, this angle ACT has to be 41 degrees because it was created from bisecting angle C and it's got to be the same as the other half of angle C. So those are both 41 degrees. And then angle ATC, well we can find out what that is simply by adding these two up and subtracting from 180. 28 plus 41 is 69. If you take 180 away from 69, well vice versa, take 69 and 1 from 180, you're going to get 111 degrees. All right, there's the measure of angle ATC for you. All right, now the next couple of things that we're told have to do with distances. TZ is the next distance, or is the first distance that I want us to find here. And let's look at what TZ represents. TZ, can, can you tell how that's perpendicular to the side of the triangle and it starts at the incenter? That represents the distance from the incenter to this side of the triangle AB. And we just said in the previous slide that the incenter is equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. So let's look and we see that we know how far point T is from side AC. Well, this has got to be the same then. We'll conclude that TZ is also six units. All right, and then finally, we're supposed to find the length from T to B right here. Okay, now I put this one in there because I wanted you to uh, think through why the answer is not going to be 14. I, you know, color-coded these things now that I've highlighted in purples. It's harder to tell, but this distance for, from T to A it can't be the same as the distance from T to C and T to B because this is not the circumcenter, it's the incenter. It's not equidistant from the vertices. So it's not the obvious answer 14 like you might think. What I would like you to do instead to figure this out is simply use the right triangle that I'm going to highlight right now. Can you see triangle TZB is a right triangle and we know two of its three side lengths. And so we can simply use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that length TB is. So the hypotenuse squared TB squared equals 6 squared plus 8 squared, the sum of the squares of the legs. Um, 6 squared is 36 plus 8 squared is 64, that's 100. And so then TB would be the square root of 100 and it's going to equal 10. All right, so that's angle bisectors, and that's really the only property that I need you to know about angle bisectors is that they, it is equidistant 
where they intersect, that the end center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.